Hello, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the week two housekeeping video. Today, we're going to talk about the items listed currently here on the screen. Uh, we're going to talk about the feedback on the homework and quizzes. We'll also address assignment 1.2. We addressed that in the week one housekeeping video, but uh, reiterate that uh, you do have until the end of week three uh, to complete that. The Onawak practice test, the assignment 1.1, remains open through the last day of class, so we'll reiterate the importance of that one. We'll also take a look at your first graded discussion forum for the week, uh, discussion 2.1, uh, central tendency, so we'll address that one, and then my availability during the week as well. So without further ado, we'll get started. As a reminder, as you are completing your homework one, your quiz one, any assignments that are inside of my stat lab, those scores automatically update to the D2L class portal. So they automatically transfer. Now, one thing that I often get a lot of times, especially the first week, beginning of week two, et cetera, let's say you go into a homework assignment and you only complete the first three or four problems and you freak out that, hey, I've only got five out of 35 on my first homework assignment. I'm, quote, failing the course. Do not freak out. There's no need to freak out because all of the homework assignments, as I talked about the first week, open the first day of class, remain open through the last day of the course without penalty. So as you're completing these given assignments, they automatically update to the class portal. So if you've only completed, say, five of the first 15, 20 uh, problems inside of a homework assignment, it's going to reflect your current progress inside of the class portal gradebook. So no need to freak out as you continue to complete them. The scores will be updated outside or inside of the D2L class portal gradebook. All of the assignments, homework, practice, midterm exam, practice, final exam, unlimited amount of attempts. So throughout the entire 11 weeks of the course, as you continue to complete them, you will get that green check mark and it will show completion of that given assignment. You have the full 11 weeks to complete those respective assignments. Quizzes can be taken up to three times. The best score is what is recorded out in the gradebook. So if the first attempt, you only got a 90% on it, uh, so that would be, say, 36 out of 40, and you want to attempt it a second time, feel free to do so. You can maximize the score up to the full points on it. Now, if for some reason you get a lower score than the first attempt, the best score of the three attempts reside out there. So there is no penalty of taking it either a second or a third time. If there's questions on that, don't hesitate to reach out to me on it. All right, back week one, we addressed getting enrolled into my stat lab. Uh, this announcement that's inside of the class portal has a video in it, and we'll walk through the underlying process of enrolling into my stat lab, utilizing IE keying in answers, et cetera. We'll work through that underlying process as well as viewing the feedback uh, inside of my stat lab. So this video is a great resource. If you had not received your access code uh, to get enrolled, that is uh, something you will need to discuss with your advisor. Uh, as a faculty member, I have no control or distribution of any access code. So for some reason, you didn't enroll into my stat lab the first week, you, and you do not have the access code, you will need to touch base with your advisor uh, to have that resent to you. So you should be looking in your national.edu email. It generally doesn't go to your Google email or uh, your personal email. It should be delivered to your national.edu email. And again, your advisor would be the point, the contact that's out there. So again, if you had, did not view this the first week, I strongly encourage you to go out and take a look. Great information resources of getting enrolled, utilizing my stat lab, as well as viewing feedback. Assignment 1.2, you have until the end of week three, so this week and next week, to complete that assignment. I went through the detailed process of how to get to this respective quiz. Please review that housekeeping video for week one. That's on the announcements page. I go through the step-by-step -step process of doing that. So. Uh, if uh, you have any questions on that, go back to the week one. I went through step by step of where you need to go, how it's taken, et cetera. So please review that uh, video from week one. 
Honor Lock practice test, we also addressed that in the week one housekeeping video. This is a very important thing that needs to be done before week 11 in terms of taking your final exam because Honor Lock is required to be used to take the final exam, i.e. you're proctoring the final. This is the only component, the Honor Lock practice test and the final exam that utilizes Honor Lock. Everything else, is uh, does not use any authentication that involves honor lock. So again, please review that housekeeping video for week one. I go through the step-by-step -step process of what's involved with doing that. So uh, again, review that previous video uh, if you have any additional questions on it. Week two, this is gonna be our first uh, graded discussion forum inside the class. Let me reiterate the uh, logistics of it so that you know what's going on. Week two's discussion forum open 12 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time of week two. It closes Sunday of week two at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Mountain Daylight Time. It's not open early and it's not accepted late unless underneath an ADA accommodation. And I've already reached out to you via email in terms of any late submissions. If you're not underneath an ADA accommodation, you must submit everything per what's listed here inside this video. Initial posting is worth eight points. It must be there by 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time of Thursday. If not, you lose, and I apologize, I need to correct this here. You're gonna lose, not nine, you're gonna lose eight of the 15 points possible on that. So. Uh, again, it is imperative you get your initial post in either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday before 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. If the class portal comes in and says you did it Friday of week two at 12 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time or Mountain Standard Time, it does not count for points. This is not up for negotiation. Again, the adult learner is responsible for time management. So that's why I mentioned in week one and reiterating it here in week two, the initial posts are time sensitive, as well as this homework problem post we're gonna talk about here in a second. Those items have to be done no later than Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. You also have a homework problem post worth one point. You're gonna go into week two's homework assignment Pick a problem, post it as an initial separate post. And what you will end up doing is to somebody else's uh, discussion or homework problem post, you're going to respond to that to earn the six points. You will have throughout the week as they start coming in through Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time to do the homework problem reply. So uh, let's make sure we got everything else here. Timekeeper, we've already addressed that week one. And again, here in week two, if it shows inside the class portal, it was submitted 12 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time on Friday, or you live in a different time zone and come in and say, Mike, Mr. Weeman, I submitted at 1159 and I live in Los Angeles. I'm going to tell you that uh, time differential is the responsibility of the adult learner. Postings of the hello, posting for attendance placeholders are not accepted for credit. Uh, they will not count for points. I will reply to you via email and they will be deleted. Do not count for points. Do not count for attendance on those. And then you must post first on it. So you must make the initial quality attempt on that initial post before you're going to see other students' postings out there. Let's look at... Uh, what's involved with week two's discussion forum. You'll notice here, you're gonna have an initial post. In week two, we're dealing with central tendencies. The typical four central tendencies, they all start with M. M for mean, median, mode, and mid-range. Those are the four uh, typical ones that are out there. So as part of your initial post, what you're gonna wanna do is explain how do you calculate a mean? How do you calculate a mode? how you calculate a median, how you calculate a mid-range. Not only do you have to explain how it's done, you must also show an example of applying 
what you stated in your definition. So it's not sufficient of doing a Google search, going out and answering just the question. You must show an example to get to the full eight points on that. And we'll look at the rubric that clearly defines that expectation. As one point, you're gonna go out to week two's homework, pick a problem that's out there, post that as a separate posting out there, do not solve it. You do not wanna solve on this by Thursday. What you're going to do to somebody else's post or one that I replied to on either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday with the calculation, you will reply to that post with the correct answer to it and explaining how you got to that answer. It's important to state both. It's not, okay, here's the answer, boom. That's only part of it. And the rubric that we're going to see here in a second is going to clarify that respective expectation. As I made mention, it's also you must post first. Even if you click on that, until you post your initial post out there for this initial post, you do not see other students' postings out there. So let's take a look at the rubric. It clearly defines the expectation here. Initial post is worth eight points. You get two points for the correct answer. You get six points in demonstrating how uh, the answer. So for this one for this week, if you define what the mean, median, mode, and mid-range is, as well as show a, an example of calculating each of those, you're going to get up to eight points on it. So if the definitions are correct, it's six. If you only identified part of it, it's going to fall in one of those. And if you don't do it by Thursday, if it's posted Friday, Saturday or Sunday as the initial post, it does not count for points. The correctness of your calculations, if all four are correct, it's there. If you're only identifying part of them, it's there. If it's done Friday, Saturday or Sunday, it's zero points. So again, that it's clear as can be in terms of what's expected. You, not only how you solve it, but the actual example to help support it. So that gets your eight points. It's one point for the uh, picking the problem, posting it to the discussion forum. If it's done Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or not at all, zero points. So again, it's either you did it or you didn't do it by Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. Your reply to either one that I give you in your response Monday through Thursday, or to another student's initial problem. If you solve it correctly, it's worth two. If you explained how to do it, it's four. Now, I wanna clarify demonstration. Demonstration, there's nothing here in the rubric that states, Mike, you did a great job on it. Mike, you did it correct. Mike did it correct is zero points. You need to demonstrate when you do the reply, that not only demonstrating to get to the correct answer on it, you must also demonstrate how you got to the answer. So if somebody goes out and posts, you know, calculate mean, median, and mode, you need to demonstrate inside that reply how you did it and to get to the correct answer. And again, it's addressed accordingly. If part of it's correct, you're out in left field, or if it's not done by Sunday, it's fallen into one of those categories. Again, replies are not posting for attendance. Good job. You did a great job. Nothing in there in the rubric states a one sentence reply on it. So again, you're not going to earn points for not for good job type of things. You must address what it asks inside of the question to get the points for the full 15, as well as the time constraints for these two guys up here, the initial post and the homework problem post. These guys must be done by Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. Reply by Sunday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. So hopefully the rubric clarifies things. If there are questions or concerns on it, please don't hesitate to reach out. The only one that's not up for debate is that Thursday requirement for the initial nine points. Because you can't have a discussion if people are waiting until Sunday night to do initial posts. You will not get credit for them. So even if you post it on Sunday night, 
you're not going to get the nine points for these first two items. All right. Questions on that? Feel free to reach out. I'll clarify any of that expectation. All right. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. We've already addressed the quality of posting. We've done the demonstration. Availability during the week. My benchmark to get back with you is within 24 hours, Monday through Friday, as well as Saturday morning. After Saturday morning, after I do my facilitation, I'm typically not available Saturday afternoon through Sunday. Sometimes I check emails and questions. Sometimes I don't. But if you do send me something Saturday afternoon slash uh, Sunday, you may not get a response until Monday with any questions or concerns. So uh, this is kind of important, especially with a discussion forum. Don't wait until Sunday night and say, hey, I don't understand what's going on with week two's discussion forum. Uh, I'm not going to be able to respond to you until Monday morning, and that's going to be too late to respond back. Contact options. Email is the best way to always get a hold of me. You can also leave me a voicemail. I'll respond as quickly as I can. Have a great week two. We'll see you in the week three housekeeping video.